Hey guys, it's Infested Chris here. I'm bringing you a uh, let's play kind of uh, in a tips and tricks video on uh, Cooking Simulator. Uh, this game just came out maybe like a couple weeks ago on Steam. Uh, I've been really enjoying it, but uh, it, it does have a learning curve. And if you're interested in learning more about the game and maybe some tricks on certain foods and dishes, then stay tuned. Okay, what I really recommend doing is going to the cooking school in the menu here. Cooking school. Now it tells you how to buy things, cut, season. It'll, t it'll walk you through the first dish that you're going to go through and uh, those things. Once you complete all these, you'll get an achievement. So uh, I highly recommend, you know, doing this first, getting that achievement. And you'll learn a little bit more about the game uh, just on the basics next when you load a new game it will tell you if you would like to do the tutorial on your first day I would click yes on this uh, it'll help you out to uh, get started and it's it's gonna be awesome it's a really cool uh, tutorial and you'll learn a little bit more about what to do and where to go and how to do things and stuff like that. So we'll back out of here and uh, we're gonna do sandbox mode and I'm gonna teach you a few tips and tricks that I've learned along the way to help you um, you know nail five stars on those dishes and to help you with maybe prep work or on how to use the grill or how to use the fryer or whatever you, you need to. So um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to be cutting lemons usually. And uh, when you first start off, you don't get this perk where you're, you hold the lemon to... What I first do is you you don't have that shift option to hold the lemon, which means when you make a cut the lemon cuts right and you and it just falls apart on you right there is an option you know, once you get later in the game to have a perk to hold those pieces together it's called steady hands I highly recommend this one and I highly recommend the thermal vision those two are really good perks heat proof gloves are okay as well and I'll show you a, 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 but we're going to turn all these on just to have them. Okay. And um, don't worry about that wand. I'll show you what it does later. But with the steady hands, we can hold shift. See how it cut, but it stayed together so we can make other cuts. If we like, we can make another cut into this, or we can cut here, and we can cut maybe here. And then once we let go of shift, those pieces kind of fall apart, you know? And that's what's really nice. Another tip and trick that I'm going to teach you is how to gather all your stuff together. So before, you would just like left click, left click, right? And, and kind of um, let's see here to reset the plate you kind of want to drop it put it back on there's another trick to kind of gather like say you have a lot of pieces you cut up uh, you want to use your mouse wheel see how it kind of goes from one and more see how they're all selected now they're all highlighted go ahead and left click and that brings them all up ready to go um, there are a couple techniques on cutting lemons I'll just teach you the few other ones that I know um, you can cut them into quarters sometimes they say quarter and I'm thinking quarters means this boom and boom so that's quarters that's uh almost 20 grams per that's about it's pretty consistent 
So you can do it that way. Oops. Let's grab these and throw these away. I'm gonna grab these real quick and throw these away so we clear the plate. And there is uh, another technique. Now, if you don't have steady hands, this is probably be um, the best way to cut lemons if you don't have steady hands. So you want to do always like straight across, right down the middle of it. And usually they have a seam right here. I'm not sure if you can see that seam. There's usually a seam right there. You cut it in half like that. Usually they split apart evenly like that. And then you want to cut again right down the middle. Try to get that cut even as much as you can. Same with this side. Sometimes you can't get that angle just right, but that's okay. Like this one got a little bit less, and that's a little bit more, but these two are pretty okay. So those are like wedges. So I like the wedges. I like doing the wedges if you're sure starting. Or you can just do quarters, like cut it in half like I did, just boom, boom. And that's how you really cut, um, cut lemons there. Okay, this I'll teach you how to do like easy cleanup. And most likely, you know, oh, I had some oil in the pan. You know, you had some oil here. You had um, some salt. Say you got some salt on your pans. You know, just... And you got some on your... You know, you were seasoning on your, on your cutting board here. Now, usually you'll see under the toolbar, see it says olive oil 14 mil. Salt, salt and black pepper 5 grams uh, the cutting board has 6 grams of black pepper 5 grams of salt now, but if you want to just clean your dish and start new and you want to just get rid of stuff this is the best way you take your pan and you click only once on the trash can boom now all that salt and pepper is gone but if you left click again by mistake you will trash the utensil I don't like that feature I really do wish it would say are you sure you want to throw that away you know what I mean I wish it would say something like that so same with the cutting board you could throw your cutting board away and the olive oil and that's pretty much how you clean your dish properly um, I used to clean it in here I used to hold shift Hold left click, bring it down, right click, tip it over. Trying to do all that was, and then you had to clean inside your 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 sink to get that all cleaned, and that, that it wasn't working for me. Once I realized you can just do it this way, it saved me a lot of headaches. All right, guys, I'm going to teach you how to flip flip something in the uh, on the grill or on the pan. We'll get something on the pan going right now too as well. Uh, usually you will put these steaks on the grill there, on the griddle. And usually for the pan, um, you're usually doing what? Is it salmon? Sure, salmon. Usually you're doing salmon in the pan and stuff like that. We're not using oil right now. We're just doing. We're just showing you how to use the spatula correctly. So when you're using the spatula, um, see how it highlights the whole thing. That's okay. You want to you want to actually click the 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 protein. So not the whole pan, but the protein. So you want to click the protein, and that'll flip it right on there. Now you have full control of this. But there's one more step you need to do. Now you need to highlight the whole grill, then hit left click again. Now you have what's called like a rotate mode kind of thing. See the shadow? That's kind of where your indicator is going to go when you flip it. So you see how it says on the bottom right, hold to ro rotate your left click. You want to hold left click and just kind of tilt it. Basically you want to turn it upside down swing the mouse to the left to tip it same thing with the uh, the fish the salmon here you want to left click the salmon the protein that'll put that in the pan and then you want to left click the pan again where it says enter contacts click that again 
I'm going to use the shadow or kind of just eyeball it about right here is where I want to flip it. Hold left click, swing the mouse to the left. Boom. As quickly as you can, that'll make the flip easier. And now you got a perfect flip. And now your steak is all done. It looks juicy and delicious. You can take your pan here and you can kind of throw that on there and you got perfect juicy steak ready to go and all that so that's basically how you flip uh, I don't recommend the tongs here I'll show you what it, it looks like when you try to use the tongs so you're cooking on the grill you're trying to use the tongs okay now what there is no left click area now now it's this free room hard it's kind of hard to do so what you want to do it's telling us to kind of rotate it with right click and then um and then e to release and it's doable but it's but if you had it like this and you and you were trying to grab it while the tongs were kind of pointing downwards it doesn't it doesn't work uh, because the tongs have a delay in the closing of the mouse so you have to keep it kind of upright like this then you have to grab your protein then the jaws will snap closed before it falls to the ground with gravity so basically you can use the the tongs if you're skilled enough you want to rotate tilt downward hit E to release and sometimes it sticks it doesn't see I didn't flip it there I have to put it back on there rotate again you know it's 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 a little finicky it's a little finicky I don't like it. I'd just much rather have the tongue, the, the spatula. I'd much rather just kind of come here, grab it, click on the contacts again. Sometimes you got to get it just right. There it goes. And then boom. It's so much easier than trying to use the tongs. They're just a pain in the butt. So I only really use the. Uh, I kind of only just use the, the spatula when I'm flipping. So I would just recommend just using spatula. It's better. I don't, don't recommend buying tongs in your playthrough or anything like that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to talk about the thermal vision perk. If you don't know what this does, don't worry. I'll let you know what it does. I'm going to turn it off for now. So I'm going to turn that thermal perk off for now. And we're going to open this up. We're going to take a tray. We're going to grab a few baked potatoes. We're going to do some potatoes here. And this is a dish you'll most likely be doing. Taking two potatoes and, and turning it on. Now as I see, I'm looking around. I can't tell when my potatoes are going to be done. The best thing we can really do here is open it up and look at the potato. Close it. And that's going to be what you're going to be doing when you first start off in the game. You're going to basically keep opening this door and checking on your potatoes. But if you get the perk Thermal Vision, we'll click that on there. I don't know why I did the sound effect, but who cares. Now we can see the potatoes cook without having to open the door. And there's also timers. Um, I'm not sure how long potatoes cook. I use W and S to kind of tell you how much. If it says uh, minute and 20, or if it says like, like 90 seconds, just go up to 6, 7, 8, 9. That's how I usually count with the timer. Uh, used, it's going to set, it's not going to tell you how many minutes and then seconds it's all in seconds so if it says put it in there for 80 seconds well you know one minute is 60 then you just go you know 70 and then 80 
then you hit E and then it's gonna start now when you're done all you have to do is kind of left click see where I did that E E boom basically you're gonna left click the picture if you or you can pick it up uh, if once it's done so I'll show you something here we'll set it to just uh, 10 seconds here and we'll let that go off and you can keep looking at your potatoes and stuff so this will go off and you're like oh what do I do option one is to pick it up and then put it back down but what you don't realize is there's another option you can just click this picture when it's done so if you have say oh I got something in my hands I'm doing this and you want to shut that thing off boom left click and then continue what you're doing so that's another way so the potatoes are done you can take them out now and do all that stuff and then we'll just uh, we'll go from there okay here's another uh, perk that you're gonna probably want to get later on I would I would get thermal vision and steady hands as your first perks and then later on I would get the heat proof gloves after that I don't think long reach is is useful I don't think these are very useful unless you're a very clumsy person like to throw things across the room or whatever you have but heat proof gloves let me show you a technique that will make that so freaking useful so say you got your steak you know you got your steak it's on the grill you know it's cooking up a storm you're cooking up the steak and everything it's getting all hot and juicy and stuff let me show you what happens when you can't when it when the perk is off so we turned it off now you're gonna look at an icon you're gonna see the icon see the hand how it's white I can still grab it it's not hot yet I can still grab that now as the steak gets hotter I can still kinda grab it see now it's too hot the steaks not done yet I can't I cannot pick it up so if you want you can skip the spatula all together like you don't have to come in here and flip your steak if you don't want to you can grab it now with your hands enter contacts or you or actually you can yeah you're gonna go like this so you're gonna hold shift you're gonna you're gonna hold shift you're gonna move the mouse forward then you're gonna hit left click and you're gonna bring it down then what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold right click and you're gonna flip it and then all you're gonna do is you're gonna hit middle mouse click and it's flipped it's a little bit different it's a little bit different than using the tongs and having to grab the tongs but say you have one part one tong and, and you have it over here and you have a grill you're grilling something over here you can flip it over you can but oh shoot I left my tongs over there you're like crap it's gonna burn it's gonna burn grab it bring it up bring it down a little bit or you can just you don't even have to probably bring it down you can just rotate it hit middle mouse and drop it down so there you go you can just boom 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 pretty easy and that's what the hot hands do so if you're interested in getting that perk that's uh, basically a little a little shortcut you don't have to use the spatula you can kind of flip things around uh, doing it that way you could probably do it the same way in the pan and as well okay for this one we're gonna do this steak with fries then they get the steak and fries uh, I highly recommend starting off with your fries I'm gonna show you a technique now here is a thing I read on the forums that will help you season these fries very well and get the cuts on them pretty good now it's telling you to cut the potatoes 300 grams in the sticks of 15 cutting board first two potatoes okay you got your two potatoes now 
Now it says here six grams of salt. This is telling you each potato is six is is three grams. So it's telling you six grams total for three hundred grams. So if you have two potatoes and they're one fifty one fifty, what's half of three gra uh, of six grams? You're gonna want to do three. So you want to season this first. Put the three grams on there. Three grams on there. Let that reset because I can't see. Okay. Make sure you, you got three grams. Three grams, three grams. Now you want to do your cutting. So if you accidentally mess up, you're like, oh no, I didn't season first. That's going to be a problem that you're going to have. You're going to have to, you know, check that out and you're going to want to cut these now into wedges the best your ability. Um, try to get the cuts clean if you can. And this one too. All right, we accidentally cut this one. I don't know how it did that. If that happens to you, just trash that. Just trash it. Just trash it. Grab another one. No big deal. Sometimes this can happen, and um, maybe I would recommend uh, doing one potato at a time, throwing them in the basket, and then tossing them down, throwing this down. Boom. Don't forget your seasoning. Three grams putting that down grabbing this kind of going down the middle here and once you got your cuts and to the best of your ability. I mean, they're not going to be perfect because of these angles. Sometimes these angles are just a pain in the butt. You know, I can't get down the middle here, see? I kind of have to go at an angle there. But now you can see, look, they all have consistent, you know, based on the size, they all have seasoning. All of them have an even, pretty even amount of seasoning on all of them. So they're all going to go in the basket. Make sure you use mouse wheel up. And you're basically going to put these in the oil. But do not turn it on just yet. Okay, so we're going to get our steak. And we're going to... Four grams. One, two, three, four. And... One, two, three, four. Now, before you put it on there, make sure it does have the four grams of each. And you want to apply it to the grill. Now, what you want to do here is you're going to want to let that cook on one side all the way. Now, okay, it's almost done here. You're going to run over here. And you're going to flip that switch. Boom. They're cooking now. You're going to grab your spatula. And you're going to put that on the spatula. Just like we did in the before. Find the enter contacts when it's all highlighted. Sometimes it goes away. Sometimes it's finicky to find that sweet spot. Click it. Flip it over. There you go. You're pretty much almost in, almost done now. The steak's almost done. Let's check on these potatoes. Don't. Oh, oh no. So we did let our potatoes burn. So you have to check. You gotta check these. So we 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 totally burnt our potatoes. We're not gonna get a good score on these. For sure, 100%, we're not going to get a good score on these potatoes. I do apologize. That was my fault. We're going to leave that last potato in there. It's fine. And we'll put the steak on there. And it's telling us some rosemary, right? It's two twi uh, 10 grams of rosemary, which is two twigs. Now, we're going to get a low score because we burnt our potatoes, unfortunately. But I want to show you what other complaints the they had. So even though we burnt our potatoes, um, actually everything was perfect. They're saying that we got some heating mistakes on the 
steak, which um, maybe I took it off the grill a little bit too early, or I don't know. Um, but others that see how we had the flavors perfect, meaning we and our they didn't say anything about the potatoes. You know, they didn't say anything about the potatoes. We got nine cooking points. We got some fame. You know, all they're talking about is really the cook on the steak, which, you know, you know, we probably overdid it or something when I was grabbing the potatoes or something on that one side. But, um, toss that and uh, turn that off. But yeah, that's how you're going to want to do your potatoes for the french fries. Highly recommend seasoning, then cutting for all your potatoes. Like any potatoes you're doing, you want to season them. If it says it seasons, and then you want to do your cutting. Okay? Um, and that's pretty much it on that one. So we're going to do the pork chop with baked potatoes. Um... This one also has potatoes with um, seasoning, uh, six grams of salt. It's telling us to cut the potato uh, into 300 grams, but the, 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 the amount is the same as the steak that we did. But it's telling us chunks of 50 grams. So this is what we're going to do first. We're going to grab our cutting board. We're going to throw two potatoes on there, okay? So maybe just kind of coming in here, do your three grams, three grams, making sure they have it. Take one off, maybe set it up the way you want to, and then kind of cutting into it there. So it's saying 50 grams per chunk. So I'm, I'm guessing we're going to do half, we're just going to do a crisscross, just like that. So we got 41, 37, 40, and 32. It's close enough. You know, it's close enough. And it's telling us to bake this. So we'll take all four of these. Throw these on there. Take our next potato. So if we want, we can do... Um, we can kind of do like an X if you want. Like a crisscross. Like boom and uh, a boom but we're going to get some inconsistencies here um, some of these are a little bit more than others that one's perfect, that one's 50 so but I'm pretty sure we're not going to get any complaints with these cuts um, they're okay and it wants us to throw that in the oven and cook to perfection um, and then we're going to do our, our pork chop. So I'll show you how to do a pork chop. I'm pretty sure anyone could do the pork chop, but just for the tutorial, if you're just curious, see how it has some salt on there. We're going to clean that off and then we're going to put our protein back on there. And it wants us to use, um, black pepper, four grams. salt 4 grams and then, oh there it is and this is what 6 grams 6 grams a ton 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and then we put our pan and what oil did it want? sunflower E30 in there Twenty-nine's okay. So we did that. We're gonna grab the pan and then grab our pork chop to throw it in there like that. Throw it on there. We're gonna start that and then we're gonna start this. Boom. I think these potatoes would take longer to cook than the pork chop, but not really accurate here. So once that's done, I'm gonna turn it off now. We'll grab the spatula. That pork chop's just about done. There we go. We're gonna find that pan. We're gonna hit left click. 
flip it over. I thought I disconnected that. There we go. I guess if you turn it off, it still goes. <laughs> Maybe that was just a notification. So, we're cooking the pork chop on that side again. I mean, it's no big deal. You can. I would rather just use the bigger plate. The pork chop's almost done. I would highly recommend these giant plates for the food. Um, they're only a one coin difference. And they're pretty good. But I'm not sure if these are serving trays or if they're just plates that you use to kind of carry stuff around the around the shop. But I use them to serve dishes on because I don't want to keep having potatoes slide off the dish and fall on the floor and all that stuff. So yeah, your pork chop is going to take a while to cook in the pan. But once it's done, we're good to go. No more. Gar we don't have to garnish or anything. Boom, that's that's pretty much it. And then we're gonna set her down. Call the, uh, the the service guy. And that's pretty much it, really. Uh, we got pretty much good stars. We got 12 fame, uh, five cooking points. Um, and look, you, you can't get better than that. You cannot get better than that. Like the cutting is not gonna really matter a whole lot. It okay, speaking of fried shrimp, all right, I'm gonna show you how to nail this dish. Like, I'm gonna show you how to freaking nail this dish because the description is a little vague. It's telling you to put the butter for 30, 10 salt, 10 grams of black pepper. It's telling you to take um, basically 5.246810, ten, six pieces of shrimp, fry it, and it says to transfer everything everything into the deep plate and serve hot this is incorrect this everything means everything this is incorrect I'm gonna show you how to do that dish like a pro empty the sauce boom all of, we need the butter Okay, and it's telling us 30. Alright, 29 is good. 10 salt. And 10 pepper. Okay. Now we go into the fridge and we grab the, the shrimp. Two, four, six, eight, ten, and twenty. Now there's another trick. If you have shrimp that are stacked on top of each other, the shrimp on top will not cook. It must be touching the pan. So hold shift to go into advanced controls. Use the mouse to kind of shake them loose. Shake them loose. You don't want any shrimps to be touching. There we go. See how they're all flat? You want to set that on the burner and let that cook. Now it's telling us we need a lemon cut into 20 gram wedges. We're going to do that here. Boom. Boom. I'm going to do 20 gram wedges just like it says. We'll cut that in half. Cut that in half. And one more cut. Boom. Now this dish cooks really fast and it's really fun. I love this dish because it's quick, it's easy, and it's bomb. Make sure you just look at the shrimp, only the shrimp. Don't worry about the sauce. You want a mouse wheel to select all the shrimp. Once you have all the shrimp selected, the second that shrimp finishes, you want to left click it into this bowl. Now, here's where it gets tricky. It says everything, everything into deep plate. Does that mean going in here and transferring this into here? No. You're gonna. It's gonna tell you. Oh, there's too much butter, too much salt, too much pepper. It's always gonna tell you that. You only want the dip. You only because look at the picture. Do you see any sauce in that picture? No. So what you want to do is you want to take your lemons. 
throw those in there. Oh, that looks so good. And parsley, six grams. Parsley, two, four, six. There we go. That is perfection on a plate. Boom. And this will give you pretty much good, good ratings all the way around. You can't beat that rating. You can't beat it. 12 fame, 7 cooking points. Um, it's telling us that our mixture it was off because it probably had 29 grams of butter. Um, but if I had exactly 30, we'd see perfect scores all the way around. Uh, this is probably because I had 29 grams of butter instead of 30. Um, other than that, you can't beat that score. That's pretty darn good. So that's pretty much how to make that shrimp dish. All right. All right, guys. This is the uh, the baked trout. This is the easiest dish you're gonna be making in the game. Um, I'm gonna just show you real quick how how to nail it. And uh, if you're struggling with this dish, it's uh, it's not that hard. Uh, basically, you want to come in here. You want to grab a tray. You want to grab a trout. And I do, I'd usually do this in prep. I would prep one of these, at least one of these in prep. So I think it's uh, black pepper, right? Yeah, black pepper, no salt. You want five grams. Now see how it's thin, the trout, and sometimes the shakes don't go, you can't get a full gram shake onto that trout. It's because it's thin and sometimes it sprinkles, but as you can see, we got five grams on there. You need, to, you need to pay attention to that. We need time. and Did, did I bring any time? Alright, we got some time here. And look at those shakes. There, you're looking on the left. Not on not, not the shaker. You're not looking at the shaker. How many grams is coming out of the shaker? You're looking at how much is getting on the trout. And then the dill. And then, where's that dill? Alright, so we got some dill. Alright, we need to have some, some dill here. Remember, look on the left right there. See how it says four? We need one more. There we go. So basically, your trout's ready to go. And usually in prep, I'll make a trout and I'll leave that right there. I usually take this such stupid thing and I, I like put it over here because I don't really need it. Once you, once you have the thermal vision, you'll be good. Now it's telling you after baking we need uh, horseradish. Horseradish. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? There we go. Okay, it looks like this basically. And usually I put this like right there on the corner so I can remember. So I'll just throw that in there right now. Well, okay. You didn't see that? All right, we're gonna throw that in there. Turn that on. We're gonna we're baking the trout. We're gonna cut our lemons here, and it's just telling us uh, cut our lemons here. Basically, four pieces. Um, if that happens, just. You're gonna have to kind of manually uh, adjust to that. Sorry. There we go. And I like to do wedges. It just looks nice when you're doing wedges. I don't know why. It just looks beautiful with wedges. And that's our plate there, but we don't need that yet. So we're letting that cook. We're letting that cook. This is a step people forget all the time. It is the horseradish. Okay take your tray set it down add your horseradish five grams remember look on the left who cares what see how we shaked out six grams but we got that five grams on there so now we take our plate boom we take the dish so good so so good we take our lemon wedges we use mouse wheel up and we select them all we throw them all on there now it's telling us what parsley six grams let's go two four six and that is how you nail the trout
That's how you nail the trout. Five stars. Yeah, baby. Eight fame. Four cooking points. The trout is the easiest. Um, is pretty much the easiest to nail. But um, you know how it gives you uh, very little fame and very little um, cooking points. But, one, but I highly recommend upgrading that trout and upgrading it to like the second level and it'll give you way more fame points and cooking points and that's what I recommend doing is um, starting off with these dishes that are easy like the fried shrimp is easy um, and the trout of course is easy this one's trout with roasted brussels sprouts that's one's pretty easy um, this one's a little different how to do this but uh, I learned how to do this it's pretty cool it's easy to do um, it's no big deal it's it's pretty much the same thing uh, this you know this is pretty easy the salmon with boiled potatoes um, what else is easy the tomato soup is easy so I would recommend getting these easy ones that they give you very low fame and cooking points and you want to upgrade them so they give you more cooking points but it's the same dish and it gives you more more stuff they and people will pay more for it even though it's the same shit you know so um, if you guys need any help with any dishes uh, just leave a comment below I'll try to make a video on how to make that dish and how to nail that dish and um, that's pretty much it here um, let me add another if I feel like an, another clip going on uh, then that'll be it um, pretty much and like I said if you need help with uh, a dish that you're not nailing uh, maybe it's the math you're doing wrong or the technique you're doing wrong just let me know in the comments below and I'll help you out as best I can alright guys thanks for watching